In this video overview, we're going to give you a guide to Aspire's interactive sculpting tool. This is one of the most powerful and unique features available within the software. It allows you to interact with the model as if it was a piece of virtual clay. And the type of shapes you can create by editing the model with this are going to give you a much more natural looking finished product and not something that looks like it was created with a computer software package. If we come across onto the modeling tab, we can see the sculpting icon under the modeling tools area of the menu. If I click on it with no components selected, it's going to ask me to provide a name and a combine mode for a component and it will let me open the sculpting tools and work in that new blank component. It's extremely untypical that you would want to start with an empty component though to work with the sculpting tools. The main use of it is going to be to take existing components that you've already created using the modeling tools or perhaps you've imported and to work with those in order to smooth, smudge and blend them together to create the finished part. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel on this. So what we'll do is just click to look down the z-axis. I'm going to pan and zoom in on the area that I'm going to work on. I'm going to double click to select the component that I'd like to sculpt. We'll come across again to the sculpting tool icon, click on it, and you can see as soon as I click on it, it's only going to draw in the 3D view the components that I had selected, because they're the only things I can work on in the sculpting tools at this time. As soon as I exit this, then we'll see the um, changed model that we've created put back into place with the rest of the components. Within the menu, there are six different options you can see here. We can choose these by clicking on the radio buttons to choose the different functions and you'll see we have five functions for actually changing the model and then the sixth function here is the twiddle. Because we're going to use things like the left mouse click while we're sculpting, we can no longer use that for things like rotating the view as we could with the regular 3D view. So if we want to manipulate the view, it's normally best to come across, select twiddle. Now I can go ahead and spin this around, move it, adjust it and reposition it in the same way I could when I'm in the regular 3D view. As soon as I come to one of the other sculpting tools, when I click, it's no longer going to rotate, but it's going to actually activate the function. Now, as well as selecting the different functions by clicking on them, you'll notice they all have a number below them here, and you can just use the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 on your keyboard in order to move between those different functions. That can be a very useful way for quickly changing the function you're working on without having to go back and click uh, on the icon. For each different function when you select it, you have the choice of a diameter setting and you'll see if I come out over into the 3D view, that affects the size of the cursor I'm working on, which is shown with this red circle you can see there. So the larger that is, the larger the circle is going to be and the larger the area we're going to affect with the tool. We also have the ability to change the strength of the particular function we've selected as well. And as you would expect, the more strength you have, the more effect it's going to have within the particular um, option that you've chosen. Now, as well as using the sliders and clicking on them and dragging them to change the diameter and the strength, if your mouse has a middle wheel, it's possible to adjust those just by rolling the wheel back and forward. You can see the diameter changing there. And if you want to move that in smaller increments, you can go ahead and hold control down on the keyboard and now it's not moving as fast. So for fast changes, just roll the mouse wheel, hold control down for small changes. If you want to change the strength, then you hold the shift key down on the keyboard and you can roll it back and forward. And again, if you want to go in smaller increments as you roll that, then also hold control, so shift and control, and that will roll the strength back and forward in smaller increments there. Now another very important part of the menu here is the preserve transparency option. With this checked on, it means that when I sculpt, I'm not going to go outside of the edge of the model here. You can see we have the paler modeling plane in the background, and by having that checked, it means that the edits I make won't bleed out onto that plane. If I have it unchecked, then it is going to bleed out on that plane. Let's have a look at exactly what I mean by that. 
If we come up, at the moment we have the smoothing option set, we have preserve transparency switched on. If I come into the 3D view and I actually click and drag the mouse back and forward, so I'm pressing the mouse key down, dragging it back and forward, you can see how that smooths out my model. But notice how it's not going outside of my original shape. If we uncheck preserve transparency and do the same operation, now it's not only smoothing the area under the cursor, but it's also allowing that to bleed out into the background. So you can see how that can be a very useful control for you, depending whether you're looking to retain the original silhouette of your shape or whether you're looking to actually create a different effect where you're bleeding it out into the background area. Now as you do sculpting, you've got some options down the bottom here to keep or discard. As I've done some sculpting here, I may like what I've done, in which case I'm going to hit keep, and that's like doing an internal save. So the software will remember to that point, and I can carry on sculpting. If I hit discard at this point, it's going to ask me if I'm sure I want to get rid of it, so I can say yes. And if I didn't like what I've done, I can discard, and it will go back to the last time I hit keep, or the time that I came into the function in the first place, as we have here. Also, as I'm going along, if I'm happy with my sculpting and I want to exit the sculpting mode, I hit OK. If I'm not happy with what I've done and I want to get rid of it and discard all the changes I've made with the sculpting, I would hit Cancel. I'm going to go ahead and just hit Cancel here, and you'll see that's put our part back in with the rest of the 3D model, the components that we had drawn before. We haven't made any changes on it at the moment. I'm going to go back to the uh, Z view here. And what I'd like to do is actually sculpt the whole of this Lioness model, even though it's made up of multiple different components, as you can see there, if I select them. Now, it's very important to understand that when you use the sculpting tools, this is a function in Aspire that's going to require the components to be baked together. So if you need a safe copy of them that you don't want to be baked, you'd have to make a duplicate of them first. Here, I'm going to go ahead and select the top component, shift and select the bottom one. I'm going to click on the sculpting tools. The software will warn me that that needs to be baked into a single entity. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And now that's all been joined as a single object that we can use the sculpting tools on. So we looked before at the smoothing tool. And this is a very useful tool to just blend areas together. You can see if I just rub over the tail section and the body area of the model here, how it's doing a nice job of starting to blend these shapes together and give me a much more natural and organic look. Another use for the sculpting tools is fixing parts of the model where you may have small holes or spikes. This type of thing can be very typical if you're working with data that perhaps has been scanned with a three-dimensional digitizer. Here, I've just emulated that shape with some holes and some parts that are sticking up. If we wanted to fill these holes in, we choose the smooth and we choose the option to raise. And that means it's only going to try and raise material. The normal smooth mode is going to try and average out up and down. So here, if we come in and just in a fairly small diameter and come back and forward over these areas, then it's going to go ahead and fill those in using that raise function as we can see there. If I have areas that are sticking up like the parts here, I can choose the option to lower and that's going to go ahead and just try and force the material down until it's got the heights all averaged out as we can see there. So two useful ways to fill in material using the raise or to lower material only using the lower option. After the smooth, the next tool we have is the smudge, which is a very powerful way to edit the part. Here we can go ahead and um, drag material around. So if I click and drag the mouse, you can see it's actually pushing the material based on the starting point and where I'm pushing it into. So I can really go in and make very strong edits to the shape and the flow of the shape as I am here. Next, we have the deposit tool. This allows us to actually go ahead and add material. So we can come down if we want uh, with a small cursor and we can actually add material on for something like the toes there. We can remove material so we can accentuate areas, take material away. If I come in here, I could go ahead and just sharpen up this crease by removing 
more material if we wanted or if we go to quite a small diameter it's possible to use this to start to create something like a hair texture on the part just by going back and forward with the cursor and then you can come in with the smudge tool afterwards with a small cursor and really blend that in to start to create the effect of something having fur. The final tool we have here, the undo brush, is really useful because quite often when you're doing the sculpting, because of its sort of iterative and artistic nature, you may find that a lot of what you've done is good and you'd like to keep it, so you don't want to hit the discard or cancel, but you may make the occasional mistake that you'd like to get rid of. So the undo brush literally works like a 3D eraser. If we set the diameter here and let's say I didn't like what I'd just done with that hair texture, I could come back over this and just rub and the areas that I go with the cursor are just going to go back to the original shape that they were in. You can see there that even if I come over here then it's going to bring back these parts that we cleaned up and pretty much every edit we've made can be undone by going back over this as long as I haven't hit keep or gone out of the sculpting tool in between times. Another useful feature of this undo brush is if I hold shift down as you can see from the text below it's going to erase the model and that literally means it's going to get rid of the model and go back down to the modeling plane. So if I was to go ahead and hold um, shift down and come in here literally the points where I touch the model with the cursor are going to be completely erased. That's also going to reset the area that's considered to be part of the preserved transparency area. So now if I'd erase those parts there and I come back with the smoothing tool with the preserved transparency on, it's going to respect that new edge that we've just created with that tool. So at any time, as I said, if we didn't like what we'd done, we can go ahead and hit discard or cancel to completely exit the function there. And once we've hit cancel, we'll come back to the regular 3D view. And you can see, because these components were baked as we went into the sculpting, and we've made no changes because we cancelled it, they've gone back into their constituent parts. Only if we'd actually made some changes during the sculpting and hit keep would they now be a single object. So hopefully we've given you a taste of what the sculpting can do in this short video. You're going to see the sculpting used in a number of tutorials. Sometimes it may be to make a very quick simple edit to blend a couple of shapes together. And then other times you'll see it used much more extensively to create the finished part within the example. There's one of the tutorials where we'll actually take this lioness, we'll model the shapes that you've seen here, and we'll go ahead and do all the sculpting in order to create the finished part. That concludes this brief overview on the interactive sculpting tools.